Hello and welcome to the Greenfoot video tutorials. My name is Michael Kölling and I will show you today how to create movement for a simple platform style game including falling and jumping. I have here a project that has um, one actor, well two actor classes prepared already. I have some ground which looks like this when I put it in the world and I have a penguin called Pengo here when I put him here on the ground and I run my scenario um, with my left and right arrow key on my keyboard I can make him run back and forth. Um, at the moment that is really all there is. There is only left right action and we see that if I run off the ground um, there is nothing happening. It doesn't fall down um, because in fact there is no check currently whether there's any ground under his feet if I put him in the sky he will still run left and right so um, that is one thing you want to work on before we get started let's have a quick look at the source code that is already there if you have um, watched the video about creating movement in Greenfoot then this should be pretty familiar to you what I have here at the moment is I've got my actor Pango I have here a variable where I define his movement speed. So uh, as 7 is you know, in every act cycle he will move 7 pixels to the left or right. And if we quickly look through the source code in my act method all I do is I check for key presses. The check keys method here does the following oops, I meant to scroll down here. It does the following if the left arrow key is being pressed I show the image where Pengo is facing left and I move to the left. If the right arrow key is being pressed um, I show the image where he's facing right and I move to the right. Um, the move left and move right methods are implemented here. They are just essentially based on the set location method. So if I want to move right I call set location and I add whatever I have defined up here as my speed to my X coordinate and I leave the Y coordinate unchanged and the same for the move left. I subtract my speed from my X coordinate and leave the Y coordinate unchanged. So the Y coordinate in any case remains unchanged so at the moment we can create only left right movement. We don't move up or down. So what we want to do today is to discuss how we can make Pengu jump. We want to have a sort of jumping movement and we want it to be on the ground. The first thing though that I will do is to make him fall because as we will find out jumping and falling is essentially almost the same. So for falling I want to create movement down. The first thing I do is I create here another variable um, very similar to my speed variable. I call it V speed for vertical speed um, and I'll just pick some speed um, and so this is my vertical speed when I'm falling. If I do this I can create a fall method um, and my fall method is very similar to my um, move right and move left method. I just copy the code out here because what I'm doing here is I just leave when I'm falling, I leave the X coordinate unchanged and I just add the vertical speed um, to my Y coordinate. So this one now creates movement downwards. Um, if you want to see that in action just for testing purposes I just call fall here from my act method. So immediately when we act we will fall um, that we will um, do in a more sophisticated way later but this is just to see what our fall looks like. So let's try that out. Go here, compile this, place Pingo, Pingo somewhere in the world and click run and there's the fall. Now if we look at that again the fall doesn't look especially nice because we are actually falling down at a constant rate. It looks more like floating down rather than falling down. If we want to make that look a little bit more realistic um, in a realistic situation, in a falling movement, the speed with which we're falling 
actually increases as we're falling. So there's an acceleration because the fall is of course um, caused by gravity and gravity has a force that continues to accelerate the movement. So in instead of um, falling here with a constant speed, we should make the speed increase over time. So what we'll do instead is we start with a vertical speed of zero. So here at the beginning that will be zero. Um, but then every time, after every falling step, um, we we increment our speed. So we fall slowly at first and then the speed will get higher and higher. How much should we increment it? Well, let's just call it acceleration um, for now and make that also a variable. Um, so that we can experiment with different values. Let's say we start out with an acceleration of 2. That means when we're falling at first the vertical speed will be 0, then we add 2, so the next time the vertical speed will be 2, then it will be 4, then it will be 6. It will increment by 2 every at every step. So let's try that out. We compile this again. And remember, shift clicking in the world creates an object, so that's what I'm doing here. If I run this now, that looks a little bit better. So let's try that. Let's try that again. Um, now the fall looks a little bit better. It, it it looks a bit more natural. It doesn't look like floating anymore. It looks a bit more like falling. So that is okay. Let's say this fall is good enough for us for the moment. So the next thing now, of course, is that if I have um, a piece of ground here and I put him on here, if I now run this, um, well, he had already accelerated a lot. Let me try that again. Um, if I have a piece of ground and I run this, even though he's standing on it, he's falling down because um, in my act method I make him fall immediately. So the next thing I want to do is I want to check whether we're actually standing on firm ground and I want to fall only if we are not on ground. So what I need for that is I need a method um, that returns a boolean. It's a test and I call it on ground, which is a method that checks whether we are currently on standing on firm ground. Um, and the way I check that is I just will check if the penguin is here, whether at this point just ex immediately under us is an object of type ground. I can do that by using the Greenfoot method get one object at offset uh, double F. So get one object at offset gives us um, an object, an actor in fact, um, that is, and I want to get one that is under us, so I call it under. It gives us an, uh, it checks whether there is an object at a given offset from our own location. And I want to check um, at our own x location. Our, our own location is in fact the center point of our penguin image. So I want to check our own x location. Um, so the offset is zero from our own location. The offset um, from our own location in the vertical is um, half the image size. So if I if I were to use an off offset of 0, 0, um, then I would be checking whether there is an object right here at the center of our own image. I want to check whether there's an object here, so I, I use an offset here for the vertical location um, that is half our image size. So I can I can do a get height and that gives us the height of our own image divided by 2. Um, so there is the offset of half our size. And then I want to check whether there is an object of class ground. So 